Good morning, everyone. This is the post-launch news conference for our SMAP mission, and here to discuss the activities from this morning. First of all, our Kent Kellogg, the SMAP project manager from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Scott Higginbotham, the NASA Alana 10 mission manager from the Kennedy Space Center. And Jeff Yoder, the deputy associate administrator for the NASA headquarters science mission directorate. And we'll begin first with a very happy Kent Kellogg. Yes, thank you, George. Uh, we had a, a terrific ride into space this morning aboard the United Launch Alliance's uh, Delta II vehicle. Uh, they deposited us exactly where we wanted to be with very, uh, very good accuracy and precision. Uh, we had a very nominal separation, and I believe we have that video we can play uh, of the separation sequence. Uh, as soon as we separated, uh, the spacecraft onboard sequences uh, very rapidly established uh, communication uh, via the uh, uh, NASA uh, tracking data relay satellite system. Uh, they uh, started the uh, solar array uh, deployment uh, exactly uh, according to the nominal plan. Uh, and you can see here the uh, solar array uh, beginning to deploy with the uh, Earth as a, a fantastic uh, backdrop, uh, very apropos for a, a mission uh, about the Earth that's going to provide very important uh, data on soil moisture and uh, its freeze-thaw state. Uh, the uh, solar array deployment uh, took about uh, as long as we expected. The uh, video quality here is actually quite exceptional. Uh, and there you can see the first panel starting to deploy. Uh, by all indications, uh, this is uh, one of the cleanest, uh, most visible uh, deployments we were able to see. The camera, by the way, is on the upper stage of the vehicle. Uh, the uh, United Launch Alliance folks uh, had arranged to uh, let the uh, upper stage wait for about 150 seconds uh, while pointing uh, at us uh, so we'd have an opportunity to capture the uh, array deployment. And uh, we were not sure we'd be able to see the entire deployment in the video, but uh, uh, we were able to, and, uh, it, and it's fantastic. Uh, the spacecraft attitude control system. Uh, got us uh, pointed at the sun, so we were in a power positive uh, uh, situation uh, within a few minutes. Uh, we had our first uh, contact with the Near Earth Network Station at uh, Svalbard uh, within uh, 20 minutes uh, of separation. Uh, that was right on the nominal plan. Uh, we were able to get commands into the, uh, into the observatory and verify that they'd been executed. Uh, we followed that with a second pass over the Alaska satellite facility uh, near uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, again, that was a very nominal pass, uh, and we were able to get good telemetry. And uh, we just uh, followed that up with a, a third pass over the McMurdo ground tracking facility. So we've been able to now verify that we have good communication through the uh, space uh, uh, satellite uh, tracking and relay system and through all three of the major NASA uh, near-Earth uh, ground stations that we plan to use uh, uh, with the mission. Uh, the observatory health is excellent. Uh, we have uh, all of our uh, uh, subsystems are uh, being uh, powered on and checked out and look to be working uh, as, uh, as we have planned. Uh, we have not turned on the instruments yet. Uh, we will not do that until about 11 days after launch. Uh, but all the engineering subsystems, the communication, the, the guidance and control, uh, the, the, uh, the computers, the power subsystem are, are all operating uh, nominally, and we've got uh, good uh, temperature performance. So this is a fantastic start to the Soil Moisture Active Passive mission, and I want to express thanks to uh, the uh, NASA Launch Services program people that worked so hard to get us uh, into space, and the United Launch uh, Alliance folks uh, with their fantastic Delta II vehicle uh, that gave us a wonderful ride into space this morning. So we have a lot of happy people uh, on, the, on the project side, and we're looking forward to getting this mission off and getting some very uh, valuable data uh, returned for the scientists uh, uh, very quickly. Thank you, Kent. And now to Scott Higginbotham, the Alana 10 mission manager from the Kennedy Space Center. Scott? 
Thank you, George, and good morning, everyone. Uh, let me start by saying we, too, want to thank United Launch Alliance and my colleagues in the Launch Services Program for the amazing ride to space today. All four of the Alana 10 CubeSats were ejected from the second stage per the mission timeline and are flying free. Um, the way th we force these CubeSats to operate, they cannot turn on their transmitters for a period of time after they're deployed in the interest of protecting the second stage and the primary mission. So uh, the current timeline has the two Firebird spacecraft and Griffix turning on their transmitters about now, about as we're speaking right now. Uh, what they start doing is, is beaconing to the ground, sending a, a brief radio signal saying, I'm here, I'm here, and they wait for someone to contact them. Um, we don't expect the, to hear back from the spacecraft for a little while, waiting for them to come over their ground stations here in the continental United States, but we may actually hear of their, uh, of their beacons early coming from European ham radio operators who sometimes listen in for the signals and then communicate via the internet that, that they've heard from our spacecraft. Um, ExoCube will turn on a little later, about 11.30 this morning, and it will start beaconing to the ground as well. Um, in summary, a uh, great ride today into space. We're looking forward to, uh, to getting the return from these satellites as they begin their missions, and I uh, do want to acknowledge all of the university students out there that had a part in building these spacecraft and, and getting them into space today. George? Thank you, Scott. And now Jeff Yoder, the Deputy Associate Administrator for the NASA Headquarters Science Mission Directorate. Jeff? Thank you, George. What a morning. Uh, you know, I, I want to, as, as my other colleagues, want to congratulate the entire SMAP team, uh, the NASA Launch Services Program, our contractors, our uh, partners in academia for a wonderful, uh, wonderful, um, you know, launch this morning. You know, I know a lot of people are eager uh, for the SMAP mission to begin delivering the most accurate and highest resolution maps of uh, soil moisture, you know, ever obtained. You know, this data will benefit not only scientists seeking better understanding of our planet's uh, climate and environment, but it's, you know, also a boon for uh, weather forecasters, agriculture and water resource managers, emergency planners and policymakers. And this map is another example of, uh, of how NASA is making a difference in people's lives around the world. And, and you know, that's just tremendous. Data and applications for uh, societal benefits are directly accessible to decision makers, uh, stakeholders around the world. And SMAP joins several other missions, several other NASA missions already in orbit uh, in, in different stages of the water cycle. You know, they give us unprecedented, unprecedented measurements uh, vital to the Earth's system. This past year has been an extremely productive one for NASA Earth Science. Last February, the Global uh, Precipitation uh, Measurement Core Observatory was launched with our partners in Japan. And since then, three new Earth Science uh, spacecraft and sensors have been sent to space to study Earth. Two of these are now mounted on the International Space Station. Today's launch of SMAP, of SMAP marks the fifth NASA Earth Science launch in 11 months. You know, that is phenomenal, if you just think about that. These new missions will help uh, answer some of the critical challenges facing our planet today and in the future. Climate change, sea level rise, fresh water resources, and extreme weather uh, events. So SMAP highlights NASA's role in an, as an innovative innovation leader in Earth and climate science. We strive to give the world a consistently expanding view and, uh, and understanding of our planet from uh, space. Thanks again to the incredible team that have made this launch possible today of our SMAP launch. George? All right, we'll take uh, questions now. First, first of all, uh, in social media, if you would like to ask a question, you can use hashtag AskNASA and send in your questions to us. We'll check first to see if we have any questions here in the room from any of our reporters here. Any, uh, any questions in the room? Okay. All right. Um, did we get any social media questions? All right. None from social media questions. So in that event, I think uh, that's probably going to conclude our briefing. Uh, we are very pleased at uh, the success of, of, of SMAC as well as our CubeSats, and we thank all of our participants in our briefings here this week. So with that, that will conclude our briefing and our coverage for this MAP mission. Thank you.
Green board. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And engines start and lift off of the Delta II rocket with SMAP, making global observations of soil moisture for climate forecasting.